Yeah, the Supervisor Richard Forrester with your uh, report from Board of Supervisors meeting on uh, October 21st, Tuesday. Starting off, we had introduction of our new labor negotiators, a contract position, uh, IEDA. Diana Doughty was our former negotiator. She has since retired, did a, a great job for the county, and Daryl Murray will take uh, her spot. And uh, we expect good things to happen. And what we're looking for is uh, never for a fight, but uh, always for good negotiations and uh, try to come up with a healthy outcome for the county and for the employees. Uh, next up, we had um, several property issues. The first involved the disposition of the Rab Collins personal property. Um, originally, uh, the suggestion from our consultant on this, Linda Hawthorne, who is an expert in antiques, was to try to go to a national website and advertise part of the collection that should stay together. There's significant value to it. Uh, somewhere between 74,000 and 103,000 is what her estimate is. Could go higher than that, probably not lower. Um, working with Christine Poe from General Services, uh, they've done the research now on the national website. Uh, looks like it's not an advantageous uh, area to use because of the cost involved there. Originally, they thought it was $200. It ends up being $200 a day, so that adds up real fast. Uh, but um, what uh, Ms. Hawthorne felt is that if we uh, put this on a major auction house uh, website and let them actually market it at their facility and then go out to their different satellite uh, areas that uh, we can get that significant value that catches. We'll have to spend $3,000 to ship it to the East Coast, ship these pieces to the East Coast, and then have them market it. So the board agreed to that $3,000, 10% to Ms. Hawthorne and 10% to the uh, auction house. Um, sounds like a lot of money, but sometimes you have to do things to get the most money back. And as I said uh, in uh, previous reports, uh, hopefully we can put some of that money back into the historical society. We do, county does have to uh, recoup some of their expenses for um, that this collection has caused as far as storage and moving and things like that. County is marketing uh, two pieces of property. We are um, working exclusively with Caldwell Banker, uh, and that was after an RFP selection process, 8.72 acres in Pioneer and 0.52 acres in uh, the Lake Comanche area. Neither one of those pieces um, got a, um, a hit the first time they were marketed, so we're going back out for marketing until um, April of 2015 when the bids will be open. That is April 23rd will be the last date. It's uh, at 8.72 acres. The price has been reduced from $29,000 to $27,000. That uh, 5.52 acres, the price has been reduced from $900 to $5,500. And uh, Caldwell Banker will get a 6% commission out of that. I'm not sure if we're going to go much lower on that Comanche piece, but hopefully we'll get uh, some uh, good marketing on them this time. And uh, the um, real estate firm feels that those are fair prices and uh, we should get some interest. The waters of the United States issue, this is back before our board. Uh, it's a major issue that's going to affect not only our county, but every county and city in the United States. Uh, California State Association of Counties, most, count, most uh, state associations, National Association of Counties, uh, RCRCC, SAC, everyone are, are opposed to this rule change, which would basically change the uh, waters of the U.S. and their interpretation in rules from uh, what they're generally looking at is the uh, tributaries, and um, that would definition would be changed so that basically everything all the way down to a puddle would be looked at something that needs to be uh, monitored and regulated by the EPA and the Corps of Engineers. And that, uh, what it has always uh, looked at is navigable waters. Those, uh, that term navigable waters, they're trying to expand that to include basically every, uh, every bit of water in the United States. Uh, in a publication that I have from the National Association of Counties, the uh, House of Representatives has passed the U.S. Regulatory Overreach Protection Act of 2014, H.R. 5078, uh, passed with bipartisan support, 227 Republicans and 35 Democrats. Unfortunately, it'll go to the uh, Senate, where the Senate will probably oppose that. Even if the Senate supports that, the President and his administration have said that they will um, look for a veto on that legislation. So. Uh, 
anybody knows Barack Obama, give him a call because uh, he's dead wrong on this issue in his administration. Uh, and that's shown by National Association of Counties, all 50 states coming out opposed to this rule change. So maybe we can get him off the golf course. We'll go on to the Fiddletown Community Service District. Um, the board took quick action to pass a, um, to uh, authorize signature on a uh, letter to the um, Fiddletown Community Services District, and this would basically address, address a concern from the USDA Rural Development Department um, that uh, we know that they're going out for another loan on top of the loan that they have in Amador County. So uh, the board is going to, did authorize that letter and ask that some research be done before it was approved. The uh, last big item is um, involving the Amador County Fair, the uh, Amador County Fair Foundation, and the Amador County Board of Supervisors. Uh, Ray Ryan and Pat Crew were in to talk about a possible joint powers authority to be formed by these three entities as a means to uh, run the Amador County Fair. A lot of questions on this issue. Uh, nothing was passed this day, but we did authorize a committee to move forward. And uh, as long as the Amador County Fair Board um, gives their blessing that uh, they want to move forward also, there are a lot of questions here as far as who would be on the JPA, what uh, role would the Fair Board have, uh, how much would it relieve the, um, the fair of the uh, state responsibilities? That's all the time I have. 223-6470 if you have any questions. Uh, give a call to our board office. And uh, the Supervisor Richard Forrester, we're going to a break, and I'll talk to you in a couple weeks. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN.